At the lower level in society, adults at the prime of life are the holders, not of knowledge, but of real power. And then the young men, the warriors. Finally, the children, who impatiently await the honor of moving one step forward. In the clearing, they are preparing a transfer of power ceremony, Nayake Dam Dam, the full moon celebration. Ivory balls, ostrich feathers, opal necklaces, each row of beads cost several heads of cattle. The dress spears are ornamented with bright colors. Some warriors have rows of scarification over their shoulders. Each line corresponds to an enemy killed. At daybreak, the women go down in a procession to the riverbed. Last night, the moon was full, lighting up the whole sky. The great day has come. The Toposa have an explanation for the universe. It is divided up into higher and lower regions. Formerly, human beings cohabitated with the great spirit, but they could only come down to earth with the help of a rope, looped over the moon. One day, a woman about to give birth came down from heaven and the rope broke under her weight. Since that time, we have been chained to the earth, threatened by disease, looting, famine, an African transposition of original sin. On this day when powers are transferred, the warrior class is on alert. Ostrich feathers inserted into large rings burst forth from their hair. Makeup, leopard or colobus skin ornaments, white adornments ennobling body motions. This is a war parade. <laughs> Nayake Dam Dam, a ceremony assimilated to initiation celebrations, rites of passage. Initiation for a generation of the tribe's males attended by the women. Part of the honors will be shared by them. Thus, with their shields and spears, they symbolically exalt strength and combat. <laughs> Thank you.
this group of men to be initiated, to cross this fundamental threshold of a generation, means moving into a world where others are excluded. It is in whole age groups, in totally united blocks, that the Toposa warriors lead their frequent cattle rustling expeditions to the territories of neighboring tribes, or wage war with the Turkana, the Lotuko, or the Murle, their blood brothers, but also their perennial enemies. In the eyes of the Toposa, God created the world for their sake. Looting is therefore permitted and even encouraged, since it enables the tribe to recover what in fact belongs to it. All the weapons, all the cattle, all the women in the world belong to them. So a war parade is more than symbolic in nature. What else is it, indeed, than a collective conditioning to give the warriors a taste for raids, to apprise them of the virtues of aggressivity, which sometimes survival of the clan depend on? Formerly, the forest covered the whole of Africa, even the Sahara. The Rift Valley breach convulsed the environment, broke up climatic conditions, brought much of the region's wealth to nothing. Deforestation by the hand of man, if he only has hand tools at his disposal, is almost negligible when compared with the forces of nature. In the dense forests of Rwanda, Uganda and Zaire, not far from the southernmost sources of the Nile, the volcanic area vies with the Ruwenzori mountain range over the name Mountains of the Moon. A vegetation almost larger than life, arborescent ferns, lobelia, senecia, hypericum, hygienia trees with their contorted branches weighed down by moss and lichens. It could be another planet. the secret lair of the last great mountain gorillas, our distant cousins, biologically speaking. Paleontologists say that 30 million years ago, large apes and ourselves had a common ancestor. Our ancestor lived in the jungle, feeding exclusively on leaves, bark and fruits. The struggle for survival when the climate got drier made it possible for men to produce nearly five billion individuals. The big gorillas, now down to 500, are confined to their ecological niche, which is gradually drawing in on them. Increasingly, their territory is being cleared and cultivated because we are too numerous. The chimpanzee has also taken refuge in the forest. He never invented sophisticated tools, nor language, neither did he conquer fire. And yet, his biochemical heritage is almost identical to ours, around 98% common genetic points, so the scientists have discovered. Extinct or dormant volcanoes, crater lakes. The whole region is dominated by water, a gigantic sponge gorged with water feeding the innumerable sources of the Nile, including the Mukangwa River in Rwanda. At over 50,000 cubic feet of water per second, this liquid universe reaches the Sudanese Nile. But here the Nile will have to contend with the Sud, which means barrier in Arabic, the biggest marsh in the world. This barrier, totally impassable in the rainy season, eight months a year, 
covers an area of 20,000 square miles and prevented the sources of the Nile being discovered until the 19th century. A sea of green, a magma, a tangle of floating islands and drifting hyacinths. In a fury of proliferation, its weight increasing 10 to 15 percent a day, the water hyacinth hampers boats, hangs on the banks, sometimes stifles the indispensable vegetation for the cattle.